From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday. I'm Alina Howder. A scary situation made easier through a special surprise. On April 20th, a Billings couple was traveling home after a date night when they were struck head-on by a drunk driver near the Metra. Our Kelsey Boggs met up with Kimberlyn and Chad to learn how the situation has changed the course of their lives. That accident happened right here near the Metra, where the impaired driver jumped this median, colliding head on with Chad and Kimberlyn. We didn't even see it coming. For Kimberlyn Eldridge and Chad Teal, life changed in an instant. You don't realize how fast things happen. On April 20th, the Billings couple was returning to their home in the Heights from a date night downtown when they were struck head on by a drunk driver. I just looked over and I saw the headlights and I went to say something and by the time it was already the commotion, things flying. After the collision, Kimberlyn and Chad watched his car drove past and thoughts raced through their minds. I got a four-year-old at home, got a fiance, don't know what's going on, got family, just want to make it home. Eventually, an off-duty nurse and her husband stopped to assist. It was just like, oh my goodness, like you, thank you, like I, I, we didn't know if we were going to survive and you actually took time to stop. The Good Samaritans called 911 and Kimberlyn's mom, who was watching their four-year-old son, Bryson. <laughs> the couple ended up at Billings Clinic with a long list of injuries. I thought I broke my legs. My knees were all bruised up and swollen. He was evaluated, broken ribs, you know, whiplash, concussion. I'm still got a headache, you know? Yeah. Still feeling it all. It was there that doctors made an exciting discovery. I went to do a CAT scan. We did a urine test and that's when we found out I was pregnant. The family of three will soon become a family of four. Exciting, but nerve-wracking. While they look forward to welcoming another child, they're worried about finances, as Kimberlyn and Chad are both currently off of work due to their injuries. My bosses have been accommodating. I'm just thankful to work for the Learning Grove. I want to thank CarQuest, yeah. My boss has been really understanding about it. A GoFundMe has been set up to assist. A simple drunk driver is what caused all of this. Even if you can't donate, I mean, we appreciate support. We appreciate anything and everyone that has donated, that has shared, and tried to just bring awareness to it. The couple is now focusing on recovering while preparing for a new family member, but want to bring awareness to drinking and driving. One of us could have died. I mean, it's... Both of us. Could have. Like, there's definitely consequences, and there's definitely things that... It takes a toll on everyone. It's stupid. Get an Uber, call a friend. I mean, it's simple at the end of the day. In Billings, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. Turned into a pretty nice afternoon, as you can see, with a live shot from the Stockman Bank weather cam and the almanac for the day. It started off chilly. We'd normally be at around 40 degrees for an overnight low, but we were below freezing at 28. But we did make it back up to typical temperatures for this time of the year. Top wind gust today at 30 miles an hour. We're going to see more wind as we start getting into the next few days. Check out sunset now happening at 826 in the evening. Statewide temperatures into the 50s and 60s were pretty close to typical readings for this time of the year. But we're starting to shift gears here as we get into the next few days. We'll look for the chance of showers to start to move in. First, the clouds move in tomorrow, but despite that, temperatures will be the warmest that we're going to see for quite a while. Then the rain, the wind, and the snow start to move in. It's at least mountain snow and could see a little bit into some of the grassy areas. And next weekend, it starts to see some changes all over again. A lot to talk about. Forecast details coming up. The Biden administration is offering states more than $1.5 billion in funding to fight the opioid epidemic. The Department of Health and Human Services announced the new grants this week to help states and tribes with prevention and treatment. The money can also be used to get overdose reversal medications like naloxone in more places. The funding will also help with programs and correctional settings to help break dependency. U.S. employers scaled back their hiring in April, adding 175,000 jobs as the unemployment rate ticked up to 3.9 percent. Last month's job growth fell short of forecast and was significantly below the 306,000 recorded in March. Still, this is the 27th consecutive month with an unemployment rate below 4 percent, the longest stretch at that level since the 1960s. And Wall Street seems to be reacting positively. Stock futures are up significantly on the job news.
It's Safe Kids Week, a national celebration dedicated to raising awareness about child injury prevention. And Safe Kids Yellowstone County kicked it off this morning with an annual celebration at the Rimrock Mall. Made up of several agencies in the Billings community, the coalition held its annual Safe Kids Week event from 11 to 1 p.m., inviting families to learn more about child safety, from fire and burn prevention and safe sleep to car seat safety. Children were able to pick up free bike helmets and life jackets. A couple of lucky winners received new car seats as a part of the coalition's raffle, something James Waller and Emily Wilkerson were hoping for as they prepare to welcome a new addition to their family in a couple of months. We got a helmet for Riley already, so when she starts riding her bike or her scooters, we have a helmet. And just learning a lot about child safety and education when it comes to the home, because we're used to just being us. Trauma and injury is a leading cause of death for children across all of the United States and in Montana. And the only thing that we can come up to do is to provide the education and to help families get the resources that they need. Safe Kids Yellowstone County hosts the event annually, so if you missed it this year, there's always the next one. You can find out more information about the resources they provide in this story at ktvq.com. The second annual Stillwater County Balloon Festival is going on this weekend with balloon glows tonight and takeoffs early tomorrow morning. Our Marcus Kokova beat the sun to Wolterman Memorial Airport to gather up the sights and the sounds. It was an undeniably early start to the day. But once it got going... There's a little frost on the pumpkin. It's uh, chilly this morning. The morning flew by. It's just a beautiful day. It is. It's just a beautiful day. Well, it's the second annual balloon rally in Columbus, Montana. It's fun because it brings the community together. I'll warn you, this is a dangerous hobby with so many ways to get involved. You might walk away feeling you, too, need a balloon. I saw one when I was three years old, so it's just been a lifelong dream. What's the most <laughs> exciting part of this three-day event? Once you get the bug to um, actually balloon, I, there's so many. Inflating the balloons, getting involved, being a volunteer. I'm the anchor. So how'd you get, uh, how'd you get pulled into this? Um, they needed an anchor. This is definitely a team <laughs> sport when you're flying balloons. So everybody lift up. For one group, their volunteer team couldn't be okay. more important. There are a lot of people we run into that can't even tell us what POWMIA stands for. There's still people out there that haven't come home and there's families that are waiting. Luke's team flies for awareness for those missing in the wake of war. A contemplation provided mental space while in the sky. A little gal that flew with us in Hudson, Wisconsin in the wintertime, and she says, you know, this is this is like floating in a dream. I mean, look around, you know, the colors, the, uh, the, the beauty, the ser serenity, just gorgeous. Feelings found even on the ground. The sheer magnitude of these balloons is something that you really have to experience in person. Marcus Kakova, MTN News. Bozeman police say that they are continuing to investigate a bomb threat at two locations in Bozeman. Police say that an email threat was received Friday evening. The department says that they believe the email originated in Nigeria and added that several other businesses across the country had received a similar threat. Bozeman police say the threats are related to pride events planned for next month. A K-9 did not detect any bombs or devices at East Main or West KE locations. Police say there is no legitimacy to the threats and there is not an ongoing threat to the community. Whether you're flying out of Billings or catching a flight in Bozeman, it's up to first responders in the area to be ready for the worst case scenario. It's why crews at Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport spent the morning drilling. MTN's Cassidy Powers tagged along for a look at how they're preparing for emergencies. If you saw tons of ambulances and fire trucks rushing towards Bozeman International Airport Saturday morning, don't worry, it wasn't a real emergency. It was their triennial full-scale aircraft accident exercise. Operations rescue. Rescue group operations. Today we're practicing a regional jet aircraft uh, having an accident here at the airport. A uh, number of uh, uh, fatalities and a number of uh, injured and, uh, you know, working through the process to handling all of that uh, 
if it were a real situation. Brian Springer is the chief executive officer at the Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. He tells me about the triennial full-scale aircraft accident exercise they held Saturday morning. We're looking at about 200 uh, people involved in this uh, today. There was a large crew on scene. First responders included the airport fire department, mutual aid from Central Valley Fire Department, ambulances, and medical aid from Bozeman Health Deccanese Regional Medical Center. There were also 45 actors who volunteered as the injured and fatalities that first responders were able to practice life-saving procedures on. Springer tells me it's important for all those involved in the mock accident to have this opportunity to work together. Especially in a situation like this, no one entity can handle everything. It takes a, it takes a large group of people. The full-scale aircraft accident exercise occurs every three years. Springer tells me as each year goes by, new technology is introduced to the airport and first responders, so they have to stay up to date. With changes in communication ability, new radio systems and things like that, uh, it's really important for us to get the opportunity to use those. The full-scale aircraft accident exercise lasted from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Bozeman Yellowstone Airport and was a success. But Springer tells me, although they've been performing these mock accidents since around the 60s, well, every time we practice, uh, we learn new things about how we can do things better. In Belgrade, Cassidy Powers, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, from lightsabers to Wookiees, Star Wars fans across the nation are celebrating the 4th. Find out more after the break. The MTN 530 News continues right after this. Q from Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Whether you've been a lifelong Star Wars fan or are now just jumping on the Millennium Falcon, May the 4th is almost like a national holiday. Scripps News correspondent Clayton Sandell shows us how fans are celebrating in the galaxy far, far away. Unless you live in a galaxy really, really far away, <laughs> you know Star Wars Day has arrived. When the phrase, May the force be with you. Becomes this. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. Apparently, May the Fourth was first used by the Empire. No, not that one, the British one. In a 1979 newspaper ad congratulating Margaret Thatcher, the newly elected Prime Minister. So not only did the Brits help make Star Wars originally, we helped create Star Wars Day. David Whiteley is a British news anchor and filmmaker. I'm a massive Star Wars fan. Who even has his own custom action figures made for his Star Wars documentaries. People saying, aren't you short for a stormtrooper? Is, is spot on. Star Wars Day is also his birthday. He'll celebrate like millions of other fans by watching the movies. The original trilogy. Um, I'm a bit of a sucker for Return of the Jedi, originally Revenge of the Jedi, of course. This year, fans can watch The Phantom Menace in movie theaters again, the film being re-released to celebrate its 25th anniversary. And yes, Star Wars Day comes with a ton of merchandising and marketing. The movies and television and comics and books. And it's just but podcast co-host Lacey Gillerin says it's also a time when cosplayers to casual fans come together around a genuine cultural phenomenon. It's just one of those things that I think nerdy and non-nerdy people connect on a level unseen by any other franchise. So sit back, raise a glass of blue milk, and may the fourth be with you. Clayton Sandell, Scripps News, Denver. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.